The next part is the remaining loan balance. And so remaining loan balance is just determining how much is in your, on your loan to pay off if you wanted to. So I put it in the notes, for example, if one purchases a home and anticipates selling it in five years, which is not uncommon, right? You buy a starter home and you, then you sell it. You might want to know the remaining loan balance and the amount left to pay from the sale. Because, you know, if you get a good interest rate, it might be worth keeping the home a little longer and renting it out, right? Um, so if you need to determine the remaining loan balance after some years, we first need to know the amount of each loan payment. We need to know the payments. And then after we know the payments, we can uh, uh, see how much interest is applied to the loan and how much is the remaining loan balance. Okay, so it's very careful. I put the warning here. If payments were a thousand per month, the total payments made would be 12,000. But 12,000 is not applied to the original loan balance because what part of this amount goes to your principal and the rest to interest. We have to be very careful when we think about this because even if we make $1,000 per month, it doesn't mean the full thousand is going directly towards that loan, right? It's actually part of it is going to the principal and part of it is going to the interest. And I can tell you that banks like to be paid off first. So most likely you're going to be paying more interest on more interest of your payment to the bank and smaller to your principal. And as years pass, as this interest amount that you owe to the bank gets smaller, the amount towards your principal will get larger. And that's why it takes you the 30 years because around here, more and more money can, of your payment can go towards your principal. But you have to be very careful when you take out loans and the interest. Read the fine print as much as we all don't like to. <laughs> Okay, so let's say in this example, we have a mortgage at 6% annual interest, payments of 1000 per month. How much will the loan balance be 10 years from the end of the loan? So if we pay for 10 years from the end of the loan, so let me do it here. So here is zero years to however many years the loan is, right? And if you're 10 years away from payoff, that's going to be the amount of years you're going to use to see the remaining loan balance, right? Because you have 10 years left, you're going to be paying payments for those 10 years on that loan. So luckily, because it's a loan balance, we're using that same formula as the loan formula. So let me write that here. So we'll have P sub zero equals D times one minus R plus uh, one plus R over K to the negative NK all over R over K. Okay, and then we know that the monthly payments D is 1,000. We know the rate is 6%, or in other words, 0 0.06. K is monthly payments, 12 per year. And then N would be how many years left are you paying on this loan? Okay, so now we can go ahead and put P sub zero is equal to 1000 times one minus one plus 0 0.06 over 12 to the negative NK, so 10 times 12, 0 0.06 divided by 12. Okay, and then we can go ahead and put this into the um, calculator. Now recall, we don't really care about what, how long that loan is because it doesn't really matter as long as we know we're paying for another 10 years. So as long as we know how many years left in the loan, then we know how many years we're gonna be paying left, right? So let's go ahead and put this in the calculator for the numerator, parenthesis, 1,000, 
parenthesis 1 minus, parenthesis 1 plus, 0 0.06, divided by 12, exponent, parenthesis, negative 10 times 12, close the exponent, and then close the, the 1 minus, and then close the numerator. Then divide by 0 0.06 divided by, oh, parenthesis, 0 0.06 divided by 12. Close the denominator, enter. So we get an amount of 90,000. 07, $73 dollars and 45 cents. So notice that we uh, there is ninety thousand dollars and seventy ninety thousand seventy three dollars and forty five cents remaining. on the loan ten years from the end of the loan. So as long as you know the monthly payment and how many years remaining on the loan, then you can see how much your remaining loan balance is um, for the remaining time of that loan. So if you go to the next example, you know, we will see that, and I wrote that here on the steps, like you have to make sure you have the monthly payments of the loan and how many years left on the loan. So if we come back to the next example, we could see that Emily bought a car for $24,000 three years ago. The loan had a five-year term at 3% annual interest. How much does he still owe on the car? So if Emily has this, here's zero years and here's five years. And if Emily bought a car three years ago, so here's three years, then if three years have gone by, how many years left on the loan? Well, if it's a five-year loan and three years have gone by, right, one, two, three, there's two years left on the loan. So again, the most important part is understanding how many years left on the loan, not how many years from when the loan started, but how many years left on the loan. And since Emily had a loan that was five years long and three years already went by, there was only two years left on the loan. So that's the first piece, right? So um, let me go ahead and write. So find the number of years left on the loan. Right, and so we know that n is equal to 2. The second part is it doesn't tell us the, ca the monthly payments. Right, we need to know the monthly payments and how many years left on the loan. So I need to find the monthly payments now. And how we find the monthly payments is simple by using that, um, if we just have to find the monthly payments from when the loan started, that's all we need. So we can go ahead and use that formula from the loan um, formula for payments, which is D equals P sub zero times R over K, all over one minus one plus R over K to the negative N K. So if we just fill out the pieces that we know, the original amount of the loan was $24,000. We know the rate was 3%, which is 0 0.03, divided by the 
um, K. And since it was um, a car, we assume monthly payments, right? So we'll divide by 12. Remember, we always assume with loans monthly payments. Um, and then divide by 1 minus 1 plus 0 0.03 over 12 to the negative NK. So remember, N is going to be five years because it was originally a five-year loan because we're looking for the monthly payment from the original loan. So the original monthly payment Emily had was just going to be, um, well, this. So let's put it in the calculator. And I'll go ahead and add parentheses around the denominator and then exponent right there. So we'll get 24,000, well, um, let me clear it and put parentheses for the numerator, 24,000 times R over K, so 0 0.03 divided by 12, divided by parentheses 1 minus parentheses 1 plus 0 0.03 divided by 12, exponent parenthesis negative 5 times 12 and you can put 60 if you did that in your head it's fine <laughs> and then um, close the exponent and close the denominator so you get 431 uh, 25 right so we round to the nearest cent So the monthly payment of the original loan is 431.25. So I'll put monthly payment for the five-year loan. Okay, now we have all the pieces, right, that we need. We know now if I want to find the remaining balance on the loan, I now know that I had two years left on the loan or Emily knows that he has two years left on the loan and a monthly payment at 431.25. So now we can go ahead and use instead of n equal 5, we'll use n equal 2 to find the remaining ba uh, loan balance. So let's go ahead and do that. So 3i would be find the remaining loan balance. Okay, so then all we do is um, get P sub zero, which is equal to D, the monthly payment, one minus one plus R over K to the negative NK over R over K. So now we have to use that original amount to find piece of zero. So D now will be from this previous part here. So 431.25 times 1 minus 1 plus R over K, so 0 0.03 over 12, to the negative. Now N now, because we're doing remaining loan, we're going to use N equal 2. times K all over R over K, which is 0 0.03 over 12. Okay, so we can go ahead and put this in the calculator. I'll put parentheses for the numerator, the monthly payment. I like that. Like that. Um, parentheses, one minus parenthesis 1 plus 0 0.03 divided by 12 exponent to the negative 2 times 12 okay and then close your exponent close the 1 minus part and then close the numerator part and then divide by parenthesis your R over K. So how we enter it in the calculator is going to be quite critical as we can see.
So I get $10,033.45. Ten thousand thirty three and forty five cents. So we would say that um, there is ten thousand dollars and thirty three cents, a uh, thirty three, ten thousand thirty three dollars and forty five cents left on a five-year loan originally $24,000 at 6% interest. Okay, so to find remaining loan balance, all you would need to know is remember how many years left on the loan and the monthly payment of the original loan. And then you can just plug and chug into the loan formula and then you can get the value. Okay, so let's look at this last example. So a friend you know bought a house 15 years ago taking out a 120,000 loan, the mortgage at 6% annual interest for 30 years. How many, how much does she still owe on the mortgage? Okay, so there's some follow-up questions too. So how much has your friend paid of the loan? And compare this to your friend's total payments. So now um, there's a few things, there's a few pieces here, right? So once again, if you have, here's zero years and 30 years, and if you bought a house 15 years ago, then there is 15 years left on the loan, right? So the first thing we need to do is determine, um, find the years left on the loan. And then we went ahead and found that to be 15 since 15 years have passed. So it's really important we say left on the loan. Okay, like that. <laughs> the second part would be is the two things we needed was finding the years left on the loan and the monthly payment. So we have to go ahead and find the monthly payment. So to find the monthly payment, we can use that loan payment formula, right? D is equal to P sub zero times R over K all over one minus one plus R over K to the negative NK. Okay, so again, the P sub zero would be the original amount of the loan. And so if they took out $120,000, loan at 6% interest, so 0 0.06, and it's monthly, we would divide by 12. All over 1 minus 1 plus R over K, 1.06 over 12 to the negative NK. Now N will be the original number of years on the loan, which is 30 times K, which is 12. And don't forget because we're finding the original monthly payment. So 30 year loan, we use the 30 there. And that's only to find the monthly payment. So let's go ahead and put this in the calculator. So parentheses 120, 000, 000 times 0 0.06 divide by 12, okay, divided by parenthesis, one minus parenthesis, one plus 0 0.06 divided by 12, close it, exponent, parenthesis, negative 30 times 12, close the exponent, and then close the denominator. 
And so you get a payment of seven nineteen and forty six cents. And so that was going to be your monthly payment on the thirty year loan. Okay, so that's what you originally had when you went and got the mortgage. Okay, so now the last part is now we have the number of years left in the loan and now we have the monthly payment. Now let's go ahead and find the remaining balance. So 3i, we can go ahead and find the remaining balance. So recall that when we do the remaining balance, that that's going to be the original loan formula that we owe oh so no so well. And I always write it because at this point we should write it because I memorize everything. Okay. <laughs> All right, so D now will be your monthly payment. So here's this. So that'll be 71946 times 1 minus 1 plus R 0 0.06 over K 12 to the negative N. Now remember that N in this case is for the remaining balance. So N is going to be how many years left on the loan. So N is going to be 15. So times k, which is 12. Okay, so be careful with that. It's easy to confuse the number of years we use on a monthly payment versus the number of years we use in our remaining balance. So with the monthly payment, you use the original number of years of the loan and remaining balance, you use how many years left on the loan. Okay, and then the bottom is r over k, and then go ahead and put that in the calculator per use and see how many, how much you ha um, your friend has left on the loan. So I'll put a parenthesis for the numerator, 719.46, parenthesis 1 minus parenthesis 1 plus r over k, 0 0.06 divided by 12, parenthesis, exponent, parenthesis, negative 15 times 12, parenthesis, so close the exponent, close the 1 minus, close the numerator, divide it by parenthesis 0 0.06 divided by 12. Okay, so your friend has 85,258 and 54 cents left on the loan. Okay, so that's the first part that we needed. So what's interesting here is that 15 years go by. So what's, if you think about it, your friend took 120,000 out. Half of the loan years go by and he doesn't owe half. He owes about 75% of the loan. So where did, did all that money go, right? And so it's insane because you think, well, half of the loan years went by, right? 15 years went by out of the 30 years. You, you should have about 60,000 left, right? No, you don't. You have 75% left, right? So that's why we have the follow-up because it somehow I know you look at these two numbers, 120,000 and 85, and you're like, that doesn't seem you really made a dent over 15 years, you know? So let's go ahead and try these follow-up questions. Follow-up, okay? <laughs> the first follow-up question is, how much, let me scroll up, how much has your friend paid of the loan? Right, so how much is paid on the loan? Okay, so that's the first question. Well, um, 
Again, if your friend is making payments that are seven nineteen forty six, but only paid for 15 years so far, so then we would have to take these monthly payments and multiply it 12 times a year and only for 15 years, right? So let's see how much your friend has paid. So again, that your friend has paid seven nineteen forty six per month for 12 months per year and only for 15 years. Okay, so let me do a blue here. So this 15 has to be from 15 years ago, that part. Okay, so um, just take your calculator and multiply it. So we'll do 7, 19, 46 times 12 and then times 15. So your friend has paid 129,502,80. Okay, so that's the first part. Okay, so now your friend has taken out, <laughs> let's, let's, let's think about this. Your friend has taken out a $120,000 loan, and yet somehow your friend has paid over that in payments. How in the world does your friend have $85,000 left, right? So let's continue this, right? So how much has your friend paid? Well, your friend has paid $129,000 in loans. So that means that if this is how much is left and I paid this much, that means I have only paid, oh, um, let me put that as not 2i, but maybe here's part A and then part B. And then I'll just put in parentheses total payment so you don't forget. Okay, so to determine how much is paid on the loan, we, ha we can take how much um, the lo original loan amount was minus how much is left. Because if your friend had took out a $120,000 loan, but has $85,000 left, that means some of that loan was paid off, right? So if I drew a little picture here, so the whole loan amount was $120,000, and here's $0. But there is about $85K left. Let's see if I can get it. And that means that up down here, there's that there's some that's paid off. So that amount that your friend has paid on the loan will be the original amount of the loan, 120,000 minus the remaining low balance, which is 85,258 and 54 cents. Okay, if I subtract those two, Let's see, 85258.54, that will give me 34,741.46. So your friend has paid, let's do this right, so your friend has paid 129502 in payments, right? And because you had a remaining balance of 85,000 about on a $120,000 loan, that means 80 uh, 34,741 is left. I mean, it was paid off, right? It's this little piece here. Well, think about it. If your friend paid this this money's already given to the bank. It's gone. The bank has this, but you only paid off that much. That means this minus this is going to give you what's that big chunk is all to the banks to interest. So if I compare the total payments to how much is paid on the loan, I can find my friend's total interest that I've paid. And not in the whole loan. Remember, this is only half of the loan, 15 years. So the total interest will be how many I, how many, how much I paid in payments, or your friend paid in payments, one twenty nine five zero two, eighty, 
minus how much of the loan um, is paid off. Okay, so let's do um, 129, 502.8 minus this amount up here, enter. So the amount of interest is $94,761.34. Now, what does this all mean? This is a big follow-up. Well, think about it, okay? So your friend buys a house. Half of the years go by, 15 years go by, and they're thinking about moving or something. So you're like, well, let me do some math and see if it's worth it, right? Well, first of all, your the, your friend's monthly payment was 719 and over the course of 15 years left on the loan, you still have $85,000 to pay off from this original loan, which is insane. So that means that your friend's total payments that they had paid over 15 years, those first 15 years, was 129. So the total payments your friend made exceeded the amount of the loan that they got. Okay, which means that the original amount of their loan minus the remaining balance is the only amount that they had paid off of the loan. So they may have contributed 129 thousand in payments, but only 34,000 of it went to the actual base principle of the loan, which left about 95,000 left for interest. And that is just extra money the bank gets for making you that original loan. So you really need to, again, we can see that this is going to, the interest amount is going to be large if your interest rate is large. And now you can see why the federal government came in and decided to control some of that. And now interest rates are from anywhere from 3%-ish to in the 2%-ish because it was just it was just too ridiculous at that point. So, okay.